Well, listen, breaking news. Uh, Trump New York fraud bond was cut from a, a, to $170 million from the appeals court. Uh, it was $454 million. So this is what the... What the liberal class thinks they're doing, what the establishment, the donor class and Republican and Democratic Party, what they think they're doing is they think they're hurting Trump by doing this. Right. They might be hurting him financially. They might be causing super big headaches for him. But what they're actually doing is making him um, more popular. Um, it, and, and if they go in and seize his house, if they seize Mar-a-Lago, he is a shoe in to win the presidency. Uh, unless they th unless they rig it right, which is I mean, they'd kill Kennedy, they'd uh, they'd kill a million people in Iraq, they'll they'll kill a couple hundred thousand people in Ukraine, they'll coup every government from here to Timbuktu, but they wouldn't throw their own election. Of course they would. So um, so Donald Trump. So they they got that corrupt judge uh, and that corrupt uh, attorney general. And by the way, this is. This is not me being a fan of Donald Trump. This is me being a fan of actual law and order and an enemy of political prosecutions, because that's what this is. Let's remember what this is about. They said that Trump inflated the value of his properties so he could get a loan from the bank. Well, that's what every real estate agent does. And then the bank does their due diligence and the bank figures out what they think it's worth. And then they, the bank says, yeah, we'll give you a loan. They gave him the loan. Trump paid the loan back. Everybody made money. There's no victim here. And so this is, this, is, this is the quintessential political prosecution. And so they're trying to bankrupt him before the election. And that's what this is. And so he just got an appeals court to cut that. So, so he lost that case because that judge was completely corrupt. Declared him guilty before it even started. And uh, there, But you can't find anybody with any power to actually stand up against this because the donor class runs everything. There's only, again, six media companies owned by the same people who want to do this to him. So Donald Trump, a billionaire, somehow is an outsider. He is, especially to the donor class. That's the important people in America. So the people with the money that actually run the country, it's not the Congress, it's not the president, it's the donor class, right? It's the people with the money. It's the billionaires, the same people who... Uh, run your media, right? And so they, they're doing this to him. Uh, and everybody, but, and most people certainly see what's happening. Now, half the country, or, or I would say, I don't know, a quarter of the country, the people who call themselves Democrats, uh, let's remember the biggest voting block in America are the people who don't vote. The second biggest voting block are people who consider themselves independents. And then much smaller blocks are the Democrats and Republicans. So just keep that. About 25% of the country considers themselves a Democrat. About 25% of the country considers themselves a Republican. And so you got 25% of the country cheering this stuff on. And which shows that they have no values whatsoever. That they're willing to become a monster to fight what they consider to be a monster. But Donald Trump was already president for four years. And he, to me, he governed like a regular... Uh, uh, Republican, except he didn't start any wars. That'd be the, That's the thing that I really hate the most is that he won't do the wars like they want. And uh, so, and I, I have the courage to say that. I have the courage to, to have people call me a Trumper like Cornell West did when he came on the show. I have the, I have the courage to stand up to that kind of slander um, unlike Cornell West because <laughs> he'll never really oppose the the liberal class because he's a part of it he's lived in ivory towers his whole career and we need people like that right and you have a lot of people who you would think would stand up and be screaming about this they're still fighting battles from 10 15 years ago talking they're worried about they're worried i swear to god they were uh my old roommate worried about uh the cr christian fascists that's that's what they're saying they're worrying about the christian they want to they want to set up a uh, a Sharia state in, in the United States under Christian. I'm like, you guys are, you guys are so fucking 20 years ago. You don't really see the game that's being played here. So Trump had this to say about this new ruling. So they, they took it down from 400, what was it? From 454 million to 175. And here's what Trump said about it.
Thank you very much. Ted Jen Gorin has done a terrible disservice to the state of New York. What he's done is terrible. Business is a fling. Can you see that? We just released a statement on truth. Business is a fling and crime is flourishing all over the state. And what he's done is such a disservice and should never be allowed to happen again. New York State is being battered by his decision. So I greatly respect the decision of the appellate division and I'll post either $175 million in cash or bonds or security or whatever is necessary uh, very quickly within the 10 days. And I thank the appellate division for acting quickly. But Judge Angoran is a disgrace to this country and this should not be allowed to happen. Thank you very much. Now, Trump is actually correct. So again, I didn't vote for Trump. I'm not going to vote for Trump. The fact that I have to say this disgusts me just to make this point that this is what banana republics do. This is the exact thing that the Democrats and MSNBC and CNN was screaming about Trump was going to do. Trump was going to po- prosecute his political opponents. And that's exactly what they're doing. And they all said that this is what banana republics do. And that's this is the end of democracy. If Trump is allowed to do well, they're all doing this to him. And they're doing it right out in the open. And uh so let me uh, let me bring in Keaton from uh, Due Dissonance. What what do you make of this? Well, they're absolutely going to hand him the White House at this rate. Yes. Uh, so the people who you know call you a Trumper when you point this stuff out, they're becoming increasingly uh, irrelevant. There was a, a Harvard Harris poll that came out. I saw. Uh, I think it was just today. It was either today or yesterday that asked the question to voters. Would you vote Trump or Biden if Trump is convicted in the classified documents case? So, in other words, baked into that poll was if Trump is convicted of a crime, Trump or Biden. It was Trump plus eight, 54 Trump, 46 Biden. That's if he's convicted. Because at this point, most people see what this is. Most people see that these are politically motivated and most people don't like that. And so uh, I think it was Frank Luntz who on a CNN panel actually said this out loud. If you try to seize his assets, if you try to take Mar-a-Lago or Trump Tower away, you're going to hand him the White House at this rate. But it's the only play that these people think they can make because they can't make a case for Joe Biden. And so their only option here is to throw a, a Hail Mary and try to actually put him in jail. Uh, but according to the latest polls, even if convicted, he would win and he would win by a lot plus eight. I mean, that's that's a landslide. We haven't seen that kind of landslide since Obama in 2008. So why are you Trumper? <laughs> well, that's the thing. So, I, 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 and the words I, of I Cornell, support Trump uh, more than I'm letting on. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And the, <laughs> in the words of Cornell West, sounds like you yeah, like yeah. Trump a little bit more I don't than like you're to letting let on, on that. I support Trump. I like to just hint at it with <laughs> with with monologues like that. Wouldn't that be amazing if someone like Cornell West actually had the integrity to stand up against something like this? You remember can you be, that that yeah. would be that would be something that would really be something that that's what we need right now. Someone like that to stand up and loudly to bring the country back together and bring it back to some kind of sanity. Well, because that is the mainstream like that. That's what that poll says. Like the the the, the mainstream person now understands that these cases are bullshit. <laughs> like that is the mainstream thought on this now. And, and now if if you get all your news and all your commentary from mainstream sources, you would think that the people who think that these are politically motivated, you'd think that's a fringe minority. No, it's not. It's most people. It's most people. And this is why corporate media is such poison, because to a lot of people, the news is what they see on TV. That's just the news. Right. And so if you watch them. You would think, well, of course, Trump's days are numbered. Walls are closing in. Right. That was a narrative over and over and over again through the through the. Yes. uh, Trump presidency campaign and through his time in the White House and since. And uh, where is he now? Not only is he a free man still after all this, but you're seeing him handed victory after victory. This latest one where the bond got cut by almost uh, two thirds, uh, sounds like. Um, And now polls are saying, yeah, even even if he's found guilty, he would still win, which is amazing. I mean, that's extraordinary. Um, Eugene Debs ran for president when he was in prison. So yeah. even if they imprisoned him, I think he could still run for president. 
He could. He could. Eugene Debs didn't have the the swag that Trump had, though. So he probably <laughs> couldn't win from prison. Trump could so, win from prison. So Trump is a Trump setting. is that Trump is that great. Trump is He's that terrific. <laughs> Trump is right we now. We love him that much, so even tr- though we pretend we don't. Trump concluded his speech by saying, I'm setting up my Patreon page where you can contribute. God bless. Be sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so now the real problem. So if he takes this to if he so the problem is they tried to make the his he has to put up like a bond to appeal and then they charge him one hundred thousand dollars a day interest. And so the, pr- the the whole point of this is to bankrupt him. Right. And yeah, yeah. to make it. A, and so maybe he'll cry uncle to the establishment and he won't run for president. Um, now the problem is um, if he gets, so if he, so now it looks like he's going to be able to appeal. He's going to be able to come up with that $175 million. He's going to appeal and he's going to be able to take it to the Supreme court. And guess what's going to happen. He's going to win at the Supreme court. He's going to win. And I wouldn't be surprised if it was a nine to nothing decision. Well, yeah, that last case, right? Yeah. Nine, 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 oh. And uh, I mean, I look, I'm no lawyer. If I were, I wouldn't be doing this for a living, certainly. But <laughs> but, uh, but um, when you appeal a case, aren't you appealing in order to prove that uh, you haven't lost yet? In that case, $175 million seems like a pretty steep price to be able to make your case. It's that, well, that's the whole point. Yeah. So yeah. here's another problem. There's a thing called the Eighth Amendment. And so the Eighth Amendment says excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel or unusual punishments inflicted. Well, this is excessive. These are excessive fines. There's no. By the way, the banks that gave them the loan, they said they they give them another loan. They want to be in business with them again. They made money off it. There's no there is no victim in this crime. And what he did is, as we, you know, uh, Mr. Wonderful, O'Leary, Kevin O'Leary, the guy from the Shark Tank, he, he went on CNN and explained to them, this is what real estate agents do in every city in a- every country around the world. This is a, this is called business. You, It's like when you go in to buy a car and the car salesman starts high, you go low and you meet in the middle. Nobody's going right. to nobody's going to say that that car dealer is a, is a criminal because he inflated the price of his car. But of that's course. what this is. And so now uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, Vivek Ram, rides with stomachache, Vivek uh, is now standing up for the Eighth Amendment. Watch this. So Vivek, is, is, he's, he's got a good case to make. Watch this. The Letitia James crusade against Donald Trump is disgusting and is a threat to every American. When you have prosecutors who are elected to office on a promise of going after one particular individual as she campaigned on, then go on to keep a campaign promise using the legal system to do it, it's unjust. And this particular case reveals how ugly that is. In this case, you're talking about a crime for which there was literally no identifiable victim. The people who did business with Donald Trump weren't individual consumers. They were sophisticated financial institutions who made money from their dealings. And yet Letitia James is using a consumer protection statute to literally make up numbers and say, hey, you have hundreds of millions of dollars in penalties that you owe. You have bond to post by a particular date of an unreasonable magnitude that even no billionaire is going to regularly able to meet. And to say, if you don't do it, I'm going to start seizing your property. It's disgusting. It is a threat to not only private property, but threat to the justice system and to the rights of every American. But the good news is there is an argument to push back against this in short order. And that's the Eighth Amendment. The Eighth Amendment prevents the imposition of excessive bail or excessive fines. And if there's ever an example that meets that to a T, it's the bond that's been demanded of Donald Trump in this disgusting New York Letitia James-led prosecution. This is an opportunity for the Supreme Court to step in and say, no, no, we're not going to stand for this kind of lawfare. Whether it's against Donald Trump or a Democrat, it's wrong. We don't want to empower prosecutors to be able to use bond and bail or bonds as a way of effectively achieving a goal that they couldn't achieve through the front door, which is bankrupting an opponent, even stopping them from being able to appeal those decisions. That's un-American. It needs to end now, not just for the protection of Donald Trump, but for the protection of every American. And in this disaster, I at least see a silver lining of some hope that that's exactly what we'll get from the Supreme Court. 
It's not just the current justices, not even the conservative ones that would necessarily agree with this principle. Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a staunch defender of this part of the Eighth Amendment as well. She's no longer with us, but the other justices are. And I hope this can be another nine to zero rebuke of the kind of lawfare that we're seeing against Donald Trump and indirectly against every American in this country today. And I think it could be the most important Eighth Amendment case of the 21st century. I hope they bring it and I hope they succeed. So that's what could save. Uh, so they went down from four hundred fifty four million dollars to one hundred and seventy five million dollar bond that Trump has to pay in order just to appeal this ruling by this obviously corrupt criminal judge and by this obviously corrupt and criminal attorney general. The criminals in this in this situation, in these prosecutions of Donald Trump, it's not Donald Trump. The criminal are the attorney generals. The criminals are the judges. Those are the, the Justice Department. Those, those, those are the criminals. As usual, just like when the FBI lied to the FISA court 17 times so they could tap Trump's phone. They lied to the FISA court 17 times. That's documented. And nobody pays a price for any of that stuff. Russiagate completely made up by the FBI uh, and the Hillary Clinton campaign. Completely made up. She funded that Steele dossier. Lied to the FBI for a whole year and said she didn't fund it. Turns out she did. Nobody pays a price for that. Hillary Clinton, I, I mean, the classified documents case. Hillary Clinton had... Uh, so many classified documents on her private server and over a hundred and nobody did anything about it. Joe Biden's been carrying around classified documents, keeping them in his garage next to his Corvette. And why does, and he didn't have, and he took those classified documents when he was vice president. Trump took his classified documents when he's president and he has the only one has the ability to make them unclassified. So, People see this now, but again, we don't. We need someone to stand up besides a jagoff comedian or a YouTuber. We need someone who has some gravitas to stand up um, and say something. You know, at long last, have you no dignity, sir? And uh, we need. Well, in, go, sorry, ahead. go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I was just going to say, in their bubble, there's no price that they could conceive they might have to pay for this. I mean, the New York AG James, she no doubt has it in her head. That she's going to be, you know, the the hero that locks Trump up and saves the election for the Democrats and saves democracy. And she's going to come out of this a superstar and she's going to be the next governor. The reality is the opposite. This is going to backfire. It's going to blow up in her face and she's going to come out of this looking like a giant loser. Just like Fannie uh, Willis. But they can't understand that. Just like Fannie Willis. Who yes, got, exactly. Who got exposed exactly. to being unbelievably corrupt. Uh, in that, and but somehow she's still allowed to be to, to prosecute Donald Trump. They just kicked off her boyfriend. So, and here's the proof. Do you, so, do you you know when um, Vivek uh, Ramaswamy says that this is a political prosecution by an attorney general? Just like when Donald Trump says that the attorney general in who's doing this to Trump is Letitia James. Now. She's, I'm going to show you here where she's lying. Here's a video of her lying, saying that this isn't a political prosecution and that she didn't run on promising to prosecute Donald Trump. Uh, so let's watch that. So this is, if you need proof that Donald Trump's prosecution by Letitia James in New York is political, here it is. I'm going to give it to you. So here it is. The president of the United States has complained that I'm engaging in some sort of political witch hunt, huh. that I've got some personal vendetta against him, that I campaigned against him. That is not true. This illegitimate no, president who sits in the right. White House. That president, because he's not my president, he's an illegitimate president. His days are numbered. His days are numbered. Yeah. We've got to get ready to mobilize. Amazing. And we've got to get ready to agitate and irritate until victory is won, but more importantly, until Trump is defeated. Yeah. We will all rise up and resist this man. And ultimately, we'll bring him down. This illegitimate president, I'm going to give you the same level of respect that you gave to President Obama, and that is 
absolutely no respect at all. Donald Trump has got to go. Hey, hey. Lock him up. That is not true. <laughs> so when she says, when she says that Donald Trump's lying about her. The President of the United States has complained that I'm engaging in some sort of political witch hunt, that I've got some personal vendetta against him, that I campaigned against him. That is not true. Mm. So that's a sociopath. Those are the kind of people who are drawn to politics. She's a sociopath. She's a sociopathic liar. And she's more corrupt than Trump. I just showed that's you. That's really incredible. That's, that, that's incredible. I had never seen that footage. I mean, you, you're the top prosecutor in New York State's outside with a fucking with a bullhorn. Lock him up. Lock, lock him, him up. up. I mean, Jesus Christ. Her, I mean, that's unbelievable. I so can't believe that, uh, her, that video. Her political enemy, her number one political enemy, she's on a bullhorn screaming, lock him up. <laughs> it's Not just the number one political enemy. She's the top lawyer in the state she's the prosecutor she's supposed to be the people's prosecutor and she she denied leading that, a rally lock him up lock him up she denied wow. that she campaigned on locking him up that was her campaigning on locking him up wow. here i have one more i have one more for you we've got to stand up to bullies we've got to stand up to an, an administration which is too male too pale and too stale <laughs> Too male, too pale, and too stale. Too male, too pale, and too stale. By the way, uh, male, pale, and stale used to open for Belle Biv DeVoe back in the day. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> <laughs> now, that, that that's one of my favorite things, because it combines sexism all, along with racism, because that's what that is. Now, there's yeah. some, now I, 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 to me, that looks like racist, and it, and it looks like sexist. So if you're you're denigrating someone because of their sex, because he's a male, and because of his color of his skin, that's the opposite of what Martin Luther King's dream was. Mar Martin Luther King's dream was to judge a man by the content of his character, not by the color of his skin, and certainly not by the sex. But that's exactly these people are, are regressing. These people are these are not progressives. I they these people are what what did they used to call regressives? The, the, they've regressed all the way back to, I don't know, what, well, how, I don't even know what words to put to this, but this is disgusting. If Could you imagine if Donald Trump was on, or, or anybody, or, or, or a white politician, was on and saying, oh, she's too, she's too uh, dark, she's too female, she's too stale, she's too dark. Can you imagine that, saying that? How do you, can, we got to get rid of her. Why? She's too dark, she's too female. But you could say the other thing, and somehow that does, does that really bring people together? And she's standing there in front of three of the whitest motherfuckers in the world, saying, "Then they're all ha ha ha." Are you? Do you hate yourself that much? You hate yourself that much that you hate that you're white? Well, I don't even know what to say. This is this is the opposite of what political leaders should be doing. It's the opposite of bringing people together. It's uh. What, what what you you go ahead, Keaton. You jump in. Well, I don't think paleness is anything to be trivialized in that way. I'm too pale. I've always thought of myself as too pale. I got the lousy end of the gene pool there. Uh, you know, I'm half Mediterranean, half Eastern European. I have the hairiness and sweatiness of the Mediterranean with the pale skin tone of the Eastern European. A lousy combination. Oh well. But no, that is resistance liberalism in a nutshell. I mean, that brings me right back to 2017. That was the entire critique of Trump, even when they had the tax march, which was you would think a tax march would be against, you know, rich people paying taxes. No, it was about Donald Trump having cheated on his taxes. Right. And identity politics was obviously uh, the core of that entire argument, of that entire movement. I imagine this must have been somewhere around that time because she's been attorney general for quite some time now. But that had to be. If I had to guess, yeah, 2017, 2018, it takes you right back. Uh, that is, and there's this, uh, I stand with immigrant New York right behind. So this is, and now the black mayor of New York is saying we can't handle these immigrants. 
And we need more help from the federal government. Um, I, that kind of divisive language, that, that's all that is. That, is. that is appealing to the worst in people. That is what that is. They're appe- that is not Martin Luther King Jr. That is not Martin Luther King Jr. That is the opposite of Martin Luther King Jr. And what has happened to the liberals in this country because of or since since 2016 is remarkable. They've become everything they claim to hate. They are now the worst version of themselves. They're racists. They're sexist. They embrace it. They embrace it. Well, yeah, well, they had to. I mean, they they painted themselves into that corner very easily because they had to reject everything that Bernie ran on because they called Bernie a racist. They, and sexist, they said right? Bernie was. And so all they had to run on was identity politics after that, because all the substance that could have existed in a Democratic Party. Uh, policy set was filtered out when they when they got rid of him, when they smeared him and make sure that they kneecapped him. So at the DNC that year, yeah, all identity politics all the time. I, I tried to, and I made the case when I was a Bernie supporter back in 2015, 2016. And I'm like, if you're going to call Bernie Sanders a racist and a sexist, if you're going to call him a sexist, well, when you call Trump that, it does, it's not going to land. Right. Because now it doesn't mean anything. And it doesn't now. Everything that, everything that the Democrats don't like is racist. And sexist, everything except Joe Biden when he's credibly accused of rape. Then he's not no. sexist, and he's not racist, even though uh, he voted against busing. He said he didn't want his kids growing up in a racial jungle, even though he uh, brags about the crime bill, which is why black and brown people are locked up at way above their population. Not because of Donald Trump. Why do you think Donald Trump is now winning with Hispanics? Yep. Why do you think why do you think uh, all, more than almost one in four black voters say they're going to vote for Donald Trump? And they keep doing this stuff. They won't stop doing that. They won't. They're just running on racism and hatred. And you're exactly right. So they didn't have it. So once they got rid of Bernie Sanders policies, which were super popular, popular with Trump voters. A lot of those people who voted for Bernie Sanders went on to vote for Trump. Did you know that? Right. Yeah. No, they could no longer be for universal health care because they smeared that along with him. So that was out. So the only thing they had to run on was representation. And Trump represented, oddly enough, uh, the exact opposite of that in their eyes. And that's what they ran against him on the whole time he was in office. And, you know, now, to the extent that they're going to try and revive that, part of the reason why the bottom has fallen out for Biden, I mean, the Israel-Gaza thing has a lot to do with it because you can't run on a message of anti-racism when you what? are helping a white settler <laughs> colonial state genocide indigenous it's... brown people who have been locked in a pen for 75 years. So that just doesn't fly. That's a dog that won't hunt. Um, but the other part of it is part of the reason why Trump's coalition has gotten more diverse is it's because – it is more a coalition of working people, you know, uh, working class people skew more diverse, upper class people skew richer. And so as the Republican Party makes inroads with working people, they're going to make inroads with black and brown people. And the thing about working class people is they have real problems. And this kind of rhetoric does not appeal to people with real problems because this kind of rhetoric solves no problems. It is just guilt management for neurotic white metropolitan libs. Um, do you think Christian, so what we need is people to do what Christian Smalls did, the guy who organized the first Amazon labor union on Staten Island. And who did he do it with? He did it with Trump voters. Yes. You think, you think he led with racism and sexism and trans rights? Or do you think he led with, Hey, let's all get together uh, ec- on an economic, on a class basis. We're all the same right. class. We all have the same interests. And so if we can get better working conditions and if we can get better wages, that helps everybody. It helps white people, black people, brown people. It helps LGBTQ people. It helps trans people. It helps everybody. That, that's the message you have to have. And that's not what the Democrats are doing. They'll never do it. It's over. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you hate shitty coffee? <laughs> 
I, for one, really hate <laughs> shitty coffee, which is why I'm excited to introduce to you uh, a company that's revolting against shitty coffee, and it's called the 1775 Coffee Company. Now, I I haven't had it yet because I only drink decaf. Steph has had it. Steph, how do you like it? I really like it. So, I've been, you know what? I have a French press, and so I've been using my French press and totally enjoying it. It's delicious. It's smooth. It's smooth. So 1775, the world awake in 1775, the world awakened to a new era. And now it's 1775 Coffee Company is bringing you a coffee that embodies that revolutionary spirit. Crafted with passion and precision, our beans are ethically and exclusively sourced from the finest coffee beans farms of Bolivia. Didn't know that. 1775 Coffee Company's farm to cup journey ensures the highest quality of authenticity and sustainability from start to finish. With each sip, your palate will recognize and appreciate the dedication and passion that goes into crafting this single-sourced brew. 1775 Coffee Company takes pride in offering customers a truly exceptional coffee experience with their premium coffee collection. But their dedication to this revolution extends beyond the realm of taste. Safeguarding freedom of speech is critical right now, which is why 1775 Coffee Company has joined forces with Rumble in defense of one of our most fundamental rights, freedom of speech. Coffee that's sure to awaken all your senses, including the sense of freedom. So choose 1775 Coffee by going to 1775coffee.com slash litter. That's L-I-T-T-E-R. And use the code litter for 10% off the checkout on your first order. 1775 Coffee, brewed to perfection, crafted with revolution. Hey, come see us do a live stand-up show. We're going to be in Stockholm, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, London, Oslo, Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Cortland, New York, Oakmont, Pennsylvania, El Paso, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, Edmonton, Alberta, Vancouver, Jeez. British Columbia, and Denver, Colorado. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for those tickets. Mm-hmm.